Go with me to First Chronicles, chapter 29. Before we have an opportunity to receive our offering here this morning, I want to share from the scriptures here in First Chronicles, the 29th chapter. This is at the end of King David's life. He had done a lot for the Lord. He had done a lot for the kingdom. Verse 1 says, Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. And the work is great, because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord. So it was always David's desire to build a temple for the Lord, the house of God. However, because he had been a man of war, God would not permit him to do so. And he had chosen his son Solomon. It was really also a story of redemption because you know how Solomon came about was as a result of David's infidelity with Bathsheba. And he was in his time of uh, you know, falling. So this is a, just a, a powerful story of God's redemption. So he recognizes that he is not able to build this temple, but he also recognizes that God has chosen Solomon. For the temple is not for man, but for the Lord, and the work is great. Now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might... Gold for things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, onyx stones, stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have set my affection on the house of my God. I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver, 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses, the gold for things of gold and the silver for the things of silver and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of craftsmen, who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? What we find in this story is such a powerful demonstration of the willingness and the affection towards the house of God, building God's house. What David is saying is, I've gone above and beyond. Listen, these are not things that were required to do under the law. A lot of times people will just kind of try to equate tithing or giving of offerings to the law. You know, they were just commandments under the law. Before or after the law, it's always about the condition of the heart. Because Abraham paid tithes before the law. People were giving Offerings to worship God, bring, bring, coming to an altar, realizing that they, would, they should never come to God empty-handed. They, you know, they were always giving to God in worship because giving is worship. And so none of these things were required under the law. It's not like he said, okay, I'm obeying the law. I've got to do this. No, because I've set my affection toward the house of God and I realize the work is great. And even though I can't build it, I'm going to pay for it. See, a lot of times if people don't get the credit, they don't want to do anything to it. You know, David wasn't going to get his name on a brick in the wall. But for the capital stewardship campaign, everyone that gives $10,000 and above, we're going to have your name etched in a brick and you're going to be on the wall of remembrance, you know. Actually, I don't want anybody to know. It's enough for me if God knows, you know. Because it's not for man, it's for God. 
This house is not for man. It's, it's for God. Amen. Amen. Because I've set my affection, I have given to the house of God. So our giving is always a reflection of if we actually love God or not. You know, God so loved the world that he gave. We are here today because he gave. If he didn't love us and if he didn't give, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't even be having church. None of us would be here today. We'd be lost on our way to hell. Thank God that he loved us. And because he loved us, he gave. He gave his only begotten son. He gave the best that he had. And what David is saying, because I love God, my affection is towards this house. I'm going to give. So he gave out of a heart of gratitude and affection because he loved God. He goes, this, I want this to be my legacy. Not all my wars, not all that I did. Not, not that I killed Goliath and took out the bear and the lion when I was a young boy. And I took out Goliath and they, they sang songs about me. No, no, no. I want, I want my legacy to be that I've helped pay building the house of the Lord that my son Solomon is about to build. And he didn't take an offense to it. I don't get to build it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. No, he goes, if I don't get to build it, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to make sure that the next generation succeeds because I'm going to invest. I'm going to invest in them. And he never got to see the temple built. He never got to see the grand opening. I mean, he got to see it from the banisters of heaven, but he wasn't there when the fire fell and the glory filled the temple. Amen. But he said, I'm definitely going to take care of it. And then what I like is, he says, moreover, I have given. Amen. Moreover, because I've set my affection, I've given. So he went above and beyond. I don't know. You know, there's different calculations that could be made about this because, you know, there's a lot of debate on how much a talent is and. Derek is, you know, a talent could be anywhere from 90 pounds to 110 pounds of gold. But I believe in today's standards, he, he gave about close to four or five billion U.S. dollars worth. Not only from his, from the, uh, the royal treasury, but also from his personal treasury. Because I think about this. He was the young shepherd boy who the family forgot about. When Samuel came to the house, they don't even remember him. He's like, he went through all the sons of Jesse. He's like, wait, don't you have another one? Um, you don't mean little David, do you? I mean, he's the weird one that sings songs and, you know, plays the harp and the lyre. And he's out there with the sheep. But they didn't know. And because he never told them that when the bear came for the sheep, he took the bear. When the lion came for the sheep, he took the lion. They never knew how he risked his life for those sheep. But God saw it. God saw the worshiper and God saw the boldness and God saw the stewardship and God blessed him. And so he raised him up out of obscurity, out of nothing. And so he's like, everything I have is because of what the Lord has given to me. And I'm not taking any of this to, to the other side. I'm going to put it all in the house of God. And then what I like here is that after he gives personally, Leading by example, then he calls on the people. But look at how he calls on the people. He doesn't say, how much are you all going to give? Uh, uh, I believe there's uh, 100,000 of you that will give 1,000. I believe there's you know, 10 of you that will give a million. Uh, maybe there's even a couple of billionaires. That'll, you know. he, he didn't put, look at the question. Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? He's asking for consecration. He's not asking for money. He's asking for consecration because people that are consecrated, they come along. When they come to the Lord, they, everything they have comes with them. And they're not going to hold anything back from God when they have consecrated to the Lord. Hallelujah. Then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the officers over the king's work offered willingly. Again, this was a willing this was a free will offering for this incredible project to build the temple. Amen. They gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. So they outgave David cumulatively. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jehiel, the Gershonite, then the people rejoiced 
for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced greatly. I mean, you want to talk about cheerful giving. People are rejoicing as they're giving. Nobody's crying over their stuff because they're rejoicing because they're, they're consecrated to the Lord. Their hearts, their affection is set towards the house of God. And then, of course, David's prayer is a powerful prayer. Listen to this prayer. Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you, and we praise your glorious name. For who am I? See, he, he knew where he came from. He knew his beginnings. Who am I and who are my people? Stiff-necked people many times, right? <laughs> that we should be able to offer so willingly as this. For all things come from you. And of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you. As were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. O oh Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now with joy, I have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart toward you and give my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build the temple for which I have made provision. For which I have made provision. So our giving makes provision to establish the vision of heaven here on earth. That's why we give. We don't give because we have to. We don't give because somebody puts a gun to our head. We don't give because, you know, uh, the elders show up and, uh, at our house and knock on the door. We're not Mormons. <laughs> the, the collection el agency elders will show up. We're not Mormons. We give willingly because we worship God, because we're filled with the Spirit. We understand and we have a revelation of the Word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Powerful provision. And then verse 20. This is, then David said to all the assembly, now bless the Lord your God. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's just bless the Lord our God. So all the assembly blessed the Lord God of their fathers. Come on, just bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. We praise you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord and the King. Izzy, come up here. I, I see you always prostrated. Do, prostrate yourself right here. Prostrate yourself. This is easy. Just prostrate yourself right here on your face like you always do during worship. That's, that's, that's what it means to be prostrated. And people do that here at the church. And I had, some, I had a man come up to me. He was offended that people were doing that. I said, bro. Why do they have to do that? Nobody told them to do it, but they do it. They do it. It's from their heart. I mean, you know, I do it. So I, and I said to them, have you ever done it? No. I, said, I can tell from the pride on your face and you oozing pride from your pores. It'll help you a little bit to prostrate yourself before the Lord. You won't be so prideful. And you, 
and you get offended with people worshiping God. What kind of spirit do you have? Seriously. Makes you wonder. Stuff I have to deal with, man. We just have a great service. Amazing things happen. And somebody comes, I don't like it that people... Uh, excuse me? I, I like, especially when you're under the anointing. It's like, it's like, it's the worst thing to hear. It like irritates the heck out of your spirit. <laughs> it's just amazing. So we give people the freedom to worship here. You're free to worship. Amen. On your face, on your knees. You can run around. You can shout. You can jump. You can rejoice. You can clap. I mean. And if you'll get in the flesh, we'll let you know. I haven't had too many people get in the flesh. Most of the time they're in the flesh. We're trying to get them out of the flesh to get in the presence of God to actually worship. You know. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. And they made sacrifices to the Lord and offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the next day. A thousand bulls. Oh my God. A thousand rams and a thousand lambs with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And then they ate and drank before the Lord with great gladness on that day. It was a celebration. Church is supposed to be a happy place. <laughs> and they made Solomon, the son of David, king the second time and anointed him before the Lord to be the leader and Zadok to be the priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David, his father and prospered and prospered and all Israel obeyed him. And all the leaders and mighty men and also all the sons of King David submitted themselves to King Solomon. So the Lord exalted Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Praise God. Amen. To the point where the queen of Ethiopia, the queen of Sheba came. Bible says she was speechless. She was, breath went out of her is actually what the Hebrew says. <gasps> when she saw the glory of the kingdom of Solomon. Amen. When she saw that temple that was built. Amen. They didn't build a shack for the Lord. They didn't build a shanty. They didn't build a cardboard box under the bridge for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They built such a glorious temple that other kings and queens came from their nations to see it. And that's the purpose of God prospering his people. To show forth his glory. To show forth his goodness. That he gets all the glory and honor. It's all his anyways. It's all his. It's all his. So that's why we give. Let's set our hearts and our affections toward the house of God. And let's be willing, generous, and joyful and cheerful givers in Jesus' name. Amen.